Hello there everyone and welcome to this episode of Let's Read Together. Because January is a little bit a boring month uh, where I have nothing to film. I'm afraid we're going to have a little bit of filler this month. Including uh, video vlogs and perhaps a greater variety of subjects than I usually film. For the better or worse. My message for the people who are impatient to see insects. My advice is please wait for a few months. Meanwhile we are going to do this little mini series called Let's Read Together. Where I'm going to show you some nice literature that focuses on insects. Because you see, one of the most important thing to an entomologist or perhaps everyone that has an interest in insects are his sources. I would like to say that I know everything from top of my head, but the truth is I would be nowhere without other sources to consult. Today I'm going to show you this nice book called The Emperor Moss of South and Central Africa, written by Elliot Penny. So let's take a look at the contents inside. <clears throat> Here we see a larval index of some uh, fully grown Caterpillars, for example, this is Epiphora bauhiniae, Achema mimosa, Aurifilius aratus, Gonimbrasius ambesina, Lobo bunea, Buneopsis. What else do we have here? Usta, Terpsicore, and Pseudophilia apollinaris. All of them are Saturnidae, which is what this book focuses uh, is focusing on. There are some other species. Uh, well, I guess I named almost all of them. So let's uh, show the Gudia kunsi, Sirina forda, Ortogoneoptilum. Um, this is a way of showing how drawings are still used in entomological literature. People like to think of drawings are outdated, but the opposite is true. Sometimes a photo really doesn't show all the relevant details. Although I have to say, um, these drawings look nice, but they're a little bit inaccurate. They're uh, not 100% like how these larvae are in real life. But uh, it's, an, it's an older book. As you can see, 1972. Let's see if it's on the front or on the back. Nope. But 1972, it's a long time ago. Especially if you're talking about taxonomy. I mean, probably most of the taxonomical information is outdated. And here we start with the general information and acknowledgements about the, uh, for example, the sex differences and the habits of moths and life cycles and rearing. It's talking about the general biology and the morphology of silk moths. For example, here we see um, a schematic drawing of the life cycle of Epiphora bauhiniae, which is a very common species found in uh, Africa. And I might gotta say these drawings look pretty nice. Especially the drawing here of the first instar larvae, it looks pretty great and realistic. And um, here we have an interesting looking pupa of the, uh, well it's supposed to be Pseudophilia apollinaris. Um, I've seen pictures of their pupa and they have, indeed they have a very elongated and uh, sharp cremaster for some reason. So uh, all of that's looking good so far. Here we see a key. Perhaps um, it's uh, for identifying the subfamilies. So still talking about general information, morphology. Here we see some parts of the antenna. Uh, the egg, and of course, important, the genitalia, which are often used to determine species. Here we see the ring morphology and ring shapes. It's actually important for um, determining species. This is about collection and preservation, about how to kill and fold and uh, pin butterflies and moths. All of this is very useful, general information. And now we get to the to the keys and the subfamilies. Here we see the male genitalia of uh, Epiphoras and Archema. Basically the um, 
group of what I would like to call true Saturni Day. Now here we see the Microgonini, Microgone. All based on their morphology, ring shape, genitalia. And basically this is a way uh, to ID uh, to ID moths down to species level. I'm afraid that nowadays this really doesn't hold up anymore because um, as it stands this book is 40 years old and uh, taxonomy tends to change really fast. I bet that if nowadays if you look at modern South Africa and the species that have been found there uh, you probably have double the amount of species and some species have probably changed in um, in their status or distribution or they've been made full species instead of subspecies and blah blah if you know that what I mean all the books are nice references though and it's still fun to read them here we see an example of some South African moths and of course the African moon moth Archema Mimosa this is one that I wanted to breed for a long time it's Dega Gorda these small moths are very tiny Saturnidae and are found in many plains in Africa and interestingly they are grass feeders okay so they feed on the like things like reeds sedges uh, things like that I uh, don't know from the top of my head what kind of grasses they feed on in the wild but I know they can be raised on basically many types of them. Here we see another, some more common ones. Um, Pseudophilia. Here we see uh, Archema cunei, which is a very rare moth, I believe. There's not many specimens of this. There's, I think there's only been 10 or 20 specimens that have ever been found, as far as I know. So everything about this piece, even, now, even nowadays in the modern era, is still uh, very unknown. Nice other, you won't see many of these in captivity. So maybe I will breed them someday. And some nice plates of uh, Epiphora moths. A demonia. Ah. Hmm. I wonder why some plates are in black and white and why some of them are in color. I mean, if you have the ability to make them in color. Then please make all of them in color, but I guess this is the downside of having an old book. Perhaps they updated it uh, when the technology became available. Here's a really nice one, it's um, Eogroa Trimeni, the Roseate Emperor. It's also endemic to South um, Africa alone. And it only feeds on, uh, well, in uh, Dutch we call it honing bloom. It translates to honey flower and the scientific name is Melianthus. And it flies in the Maka land. Um, basically it feeds on several types of Melianthus which are common there. It's really beautiful pink moth. I wish I could show it to you in my channel sometime. In fact, I think it will happen. I'm just 25 years old and my, and my career is just getting, getting started. So I think it will happen someday. Here we have uh, Antistad Moptera. Um, it's, it's interesting because this uh, silk moth uh, is found multiple parts of Africa, but its caterpillars and food plants have, as far as I know, not been recorded to science. So somebody has to read that one sometime. Pseudanthrea. I tried to breed those. It wasn't a success. I couldn't get them to pair. I guess I'll have to try sometime again. Well, here are some, some uh, interesting species like... Uh, well, here we have uh, Sirina Forda, which is a quite common species locally. Uh, this should be Rohaniella Pygmea, Melanocera. For people who like pictures, this book is also a recommendation, I guess. Pseudobuneas, there's so many Pseudobuneas in Africa. Interestingly, I got eggs of Pseudobuneas many times, but I always fail to raise them for some reason. I don't know why. Tried them on many plants, prunes, liquid amber, but nope, wasn't a success, I'm afraid. Athletes, a very great species of silk moth that you can find in Africa, it's quite polyphagous. Brasias, no. I guess for IDing uh, South African moth species, this book is still viable nowadays. Many of the species that we see here still have their, um, have retained their species status today. 
And here we see some things that we have seen on my channel before. This is Pseudimbrasia. Remember my Pseudimbrasia de Rolai videos? I bred a lot of those this year. It's easy to breed, it's fun. It's really a huge piece. You will be surprised at how big it is. Here we see some nice Lobo Bunea. Let's see, oh yes, Lobo Bunea Fedusa. Um, it's technically the species that I've bred, although I was breeding Lobo Bunea Fedusa Christi, which is perhaps now its own species, Lobo Bunea Christi. Um, the underside, oh here we have it, Lobo Bunea Christi. This is the one that I was breeding this year. Take a look at my other videos if you haven't seen it. It's very fascinating to breed. Um, Buneopsis, they are also grass feeder feeders and most of them feed on Scleria. Uh, Scleria Rheinmanni, which is um, <coughs> which can be a locally common uh, grass found in plains in Africa. It's a really nice piece, it's too bad I never got any eggs. Holocerina, I have bred those before but Unfortunately, I never made a video of them. I don't know why. I do have the caterpillars on my YouTube channel. Caterpillars have a nasty sting. Vegetia, Gudia. Here we have color plates again. Aurifelius. Ah, some larva. And some Loba Buneas in color. Ah, here is starting to have color. Here we see some beautiful and colorful uh, silk moth from Africa. It's one of my dream species. Uh, Loba Bunea jacksoni. Here we see all of their caterpillars illustrated by a photo, this time not a drawing, which is very useful to uh, idea them. So, these Bineopsis are really incredible. I really, really, really want to see them someday. This Ubena, also a very nice but obscure genus. Micagonini in color. Beautiful stuff. And here we go to the IDing part again, with, which includes morphological information, genitalia, keys. It's kind of cool. Here we see some. Ah, we should get to that part later. I shouldn't skip to the end of the book, but. All of this is interesting, but it's not as cool to show on YouTube because, uh, well, it's basically only text. But um, here's something that I like here in the back of the book. Because what we see here is a name of a list of food plants. For example, um, here, for example, we see Celtis, family it belongs to, Elmacea. And the kind of moths that eat it, for example, Bunea alkino, Pseudimbasia of uh, Tirea. I have, or I don't know what that P stands for actually, that's strange. As far as I know, it should be a Gonimbrasia. It's perhaps, uh, no, hmm, I have no idea. But, uh, for example, uh, Ludia ornithoptera, uh, it's coleus, or, uh, well, Paper tree, Comifora, uh, Comifora mollis can be quite common in Africa. And we see that the African moon moth, Archema mimosa, but also Hustater psychore, it will eat it. So this is really great reference for a breeder. Or for somebody that found caterpillars in the wild. Of course, this is not 100% this accurate, okay? I mean, uh, in reality, these host plant lists are much more extensive than this. It's only small selection of uh, common plants perhaps but it's a it's, it's a nice tool I guess it's better than nothing it's a reference for some obscure species that, uh, that you want to breed and it is basically it and per most of South Africa I mean if you if you can get it for a low price then do it it's uh, an interesting book I mean Sadly, nowadays there are better references to be found that are online or in more modern books. But, well, there's no such thing as too much information, is there? So either way, I would say this is a really cool book to have. Thanks for watching. Just a short video. Oh, and by the way, everything you see here, I've breed been breeding this myself. And I killed it. Well, I didn't kill it, that's because well, why they look so horrible. And uh, I pinned it because I'm still practicing setting moths in captivity. 
Either way, thanks for watching and until next time.